Bringing us the latest now in the war in Ukraine. A Pentagon official is calling Russian gains in the latest offensive minimal at best, but the situation is getting more desperate in the besieged city of Mariupol. Senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel is in Ukraine. Good morning, Ian. Yeah, George, good morning from the outskirts of Kharkiv. I don't know if you can hear some of the sound here, but we're certainly hearing the sound of heavy battles taking place. We've seen some Ukrainian tanks moving up towards positions, but we're hearing Russians firing back these multiple rocket launch systems. Uh, the Ukrainians are on the offensive. They're pushing the Russians back from the villages all around this area. But this whole district has been pretty much emptied of residents. We see the debris, the shrapnel, the bomb damage all around here, and the residents have been forced to leave as this battle grinds on here and, of course, in that strategic city of Mariupol. Overnight, Russian forces again pounding the Avastal steel plant, the last stronghold for Ukrainian fighters and up to 200 civilians trapped in the strategic port city of Mariupol. The large factory complex devastated by relentless bombardment. Smoke from the site seen in this video circulating online. The Russian shelling resumed after the first group of roughly 100 civilians were evacuated from the steel plant, heading for safety in the Ukrainian-controlled city of Zaporizhia. More attempts are being made to rescue other civilians, but Ukraine's foreign minister warning the process is difficult. Everything is very fragile. Things can fall apart at any given moment. And now a US official warning that Russia's attempting to annex two more Ukrainian territories by mid-May, using false referenda to justify their claims. Fabricated votes uh, will not be considered uh, legitimate, nor will any attempts to annex additional Ukrainian territory. This comes as civilian targets come under repeated fire across southern and eastern Ukraine. Officials in Luhansk releasing this video showing a secondary school in flames after a Russian strike. And to the south in Odessa, rescuers rushed to the scene of a missile that struck a dormitory, reportedly killing a teenage boy and injuring a teenage girl. Amid these attacks, Russia facing setbacks in the country. Ukraine's military say this dramatic new footage shows two successful drone strikes on Russian boats in the Black Sea. And outside of Kharkiv, Ukrainian forces successfully retaking villages on the outskirts of the city. But the shelling of Kharkiv continues. For hundreds of the residents here, the only place left that's safe to live is underground. Here we met Mikola and his wife, now living between two turnstiles that lead down into the subway. He moved here after his home was destroyed by the bombings. It's hard, he says, the pressure of this war now taking a toll on the most vulnerable here. Well, George, it is now becoming clear that the Russians have run into major problems, that we know that the Russian chief of staff, General Karasimov, uh, entered the Donbass last week. He stayed there for a number of days. There are even rumours uh, that perhaps he was injured, but the Pentagon uh, senior defence officials certainly saying that they can't confirm or deny that. Uh, but clearly their advance is going much slower than they expected. The Ukrainians are managing to hold them back so far, but it still feels there's a long way to go in this conflict as it just, as you can hear, grinds on and on. George? Month after month. Okay, Ian Panel, thanks very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.